Um, my Indian name at birth is Kalapa, which means hanging from heaven. And then as I grew up with our culture, I was constantly surrounded by culture growing up. My grandparents are very cultural. My grandfather is a big chief where we're from, and he was also an artist. So um, a great influence for me from day one. He was my hero, I guess you can say. His name was Gus Maddelpie. And his wife, my grandmother, her name's Florence Maddleby, and she comes from a long line of uh, big hereditary chiefs from Village Island. So I was surrounded by all of that growing up. Um, as I got older, as growing up in a potlatch world, I got initiated into a Hamatsa society, and that's a very specific dance within our potlatch world. It's kind of held in the highest regard. It's a real honor to be a part of this society. And the name I got with that was uh, Dzimkuyat. And then as time went on again, I guess I was being groomed by my grandparents with the culture and everything. I was dancing all the time. I was very artistic. Uh, I'm a singer. Um, I, I just live for our potlatch world. So as I was growing up, with all the strong teachings I got from my grandparents, a lot of my teachings were about respect and honor and integrity and how you conduct yourself outside our potlatches as well as when you're in a potlatch. Um, when you're in the potlatch in big houses, like respect and honor is very huge. So leaving that, I was always raised with, you know, you you act the same way outside as you do in the inside. You treat everybody in the world with respect. And in turn, however you treat people is how they will treat you. So as time went on, my grandfather passed away. And then um, my mother was the eldest daughter. Uh, my granny Flory, my grandpa Gus, and my grandpa never had any sons. So I was the firstborn eldest son to him and my granny Flory. So I took on my great grandfather's um, potlatching position, his chieftainship, and his name was Makwala, which means moon. So that's the name I go with now, and that's my chief name, I guess. So I'm a chief uh, today. Um, Lots of responsibility comes with that, but I don't think the responsibility is, I guess, as much of a struggle as it is to a lot of people. I think I'm the, at, at this date today the youngest chief within my nation, um, but I think the virtues and the teachings that I grew up with had really prepared me for a lot of stuff that I do today and how I conduct myself and what my art is really about. Um, most of all, I, I work with passion in everything that I do. Uh, just love and honor in everything I do. I strive just to be the best that I can be. And uh, those are just great teachings that I got from my family. So growing up with my culture, my, I guess my culture is the greatest influence for me within everything I still do today, like I live it. I, I'm, an art, I'm a carver, like I carve for potlatches, I carve masks and I help with dances and I'm a singer and I'm a witness to other people's great events and, and I just do the best that I can to be present all the time. Um, and a lot of this comes through in the work that I do today. I strive to be the best artist that I personally can be. And I strive towards innovation and pushing boundaries and on and on and exploring new mediums and styles and colors. Um, because I always had a, a feeling that we should constantly be growing as individuals and especially as an artist. And I don't think through time, our native art form was ever stagnant. It was always evolving. 
with all the uh, studying that I've ever done and all the uh, teachings and the stories that I had ever heard, um, the art was always moving. And especially when contact with the Europeans came, our people started carving white masks with little mustaches and goatees and they had high top hats on and fancy little ties on them and this was foreign but they were so amazed by this new presence and this new world that was the interaction that they carved and they did art about it and they even um, composed songs and dances and their little fancy dances and fun things and then along with that came gambling and all that kind of stuff and they our people just evolved and adapted and went with it so some of my earliest teachings from my grandfather was to be adaptable um, when I was I think nine eight nine years old I was trying to plead with my grandfather to teach me how to do native art and I kept going to them after school. I'd rush up to their home right after school and I'd sit with them at a table and I'd be like, teach me this and teach me this. And he would be like, no, no, you're not ready. <clears throat> and then he said, why don't you go down the wharf and draw some boats? So I went down the wharf and drew boats and I was all frustrated and I'd show him. He said, oh, they look good. They look good. Yeah, just keep going. So then I drew mountains and I drew everything around me, everything in my environment. I'd draw friends. Uh, you know, I'd be sitting in the little community bingo hall with family and I'd be drawing people playing bingo and stuff like that. And then finally I brought all these drawings back to my grandpa and he was so amazed. And I said, so you think I'm ready now? Can you teach me how to do native art? And he said, yeah. So we sat down and I was so excited. And I was looking at the table and I was like, oh, great. You know, I'm going to learn something. And the first drawing my grandfather did was of a, a war boat. And then the second drawing was Jughead. And I was like, this isn't native art. <laughs> so I was kind of a little bit disappointed. And then he kind of laughed and he said, you'll learn. Uh, don't worry, it'll come. So then he took out some of his old drawings and started showing me. And I was so amazed. And he let me have them, actually. And I took them with me. And I kept drawing over and over and kept doing so well with them. And I kept bringing them back to him. And... I never really understood because it wasn't verbal of uh, the teachings that I was going through in, at that time. Um, not until I left home, I left Alert Bay and I pursued education here in Victoria. So as I came here and I was in high school and I kept, you know, my curiosity started to grow worldwide because I was exposed to so much more artwork and different styles and cultures and and the amusement and excitement that I got from it was just so amazing that I kept studying as much as I could and then I and then I started to explore like Renaissance art with Leonardo da Vinci and everybody and anatomy and portraits and I was just like wow and so my sketchbooks through my entire life were filled with everything but native art and then I would sit down to do work for my family and, that, and then I just, Native Art just flew out of my hands and the creativity was just flowing and non-stop and moving. But all my free time was drawing nothing but Native Art. So I go and I reflect on all my work now as a teenager and they're just sketchbooks and sketchbooks of everything like horses and flowers and all this kind of stuff. And now... And those are the teachings that I got from my grandpa from being forced to go draw boats and everything else with native art. But now I'm so honored uh, from those teachings because I don't feel like I'm limited. I don't feel like I have to replicate anything. I don't feel like it's stagnant within me. Um, like within our culture, there's a lot of traditionalists, I like to call themselves traditionalists, but you know, what is traditional is my attitude. Um, when nothing was ever stagnant, everything was moving all the time. So people are hanging on to a certain period and calling it traditional, but before that, you know, that was very innovative. 